All right, welcome back, everybody. BSL Season 6, Group B. Uh, we've made it all the way to our final match of the night. We had Dandy, Skyrocket, out of the group in first place, undefeated, uh, a staple of late, uh, of, of high placements in BSL. He's already made it on. We just had Yeti eliminated, and that means our final two players are going to be TT1 and Gorinich, who have played before, so this is going to be a little bit of a salty run back. And uh, if we check out the maps, they're also going to be no strangers. If you've been watching this series today, uh, it's going to start off on Circuit Breaker, go to Sylphid, then we've got In the Way of an Eddy uh, as our final map uh, of the night. Wow, it's been actually really fun to watch so many different uh, series because everything feels like it's played out very, uh, very differently. So I'm glad we get a chance to watch the same two players go at it again, I hope. Yeah, I'm excited to see if TT1 can go the whole way. Of course, he's North American Hope, but also Gorinich playing extremely well. I wonder if TT1 will switch up his build. Uh, he's had uh, good success with the aggressive play. He may just continue to do it. TT1's been a, a little bit a little bit of a gateway man today. He just loves his Zealots and hates his Gas Geysers. So yeah. uh, it, it has been a very aggressive day for TT1, but for Gorinich, Man, sometimes he holds on like the f against the first attack, the second attack, but after a while, he just kind of falls to the pressure. So if TT1's playing that high pressure style, he can absolutely get it done. Uh, and while I guess both TT1 and Gorinich has looked have looked good, no one has looked better than Tai2, who has accurately predicted everything that's happened here today. And if you want to find out who he predicts to win this series. You can read an excellent article on uh, previewing the BSL groups B and D uh, over on Team Liquid, uh, and maybe that'll be a little bit of a spoiler, but it's it's really impressive. Everything has played out pretty close to that, so I uh, I'm actually really excited to see if that holds true here in our final uh, game of the night. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. So I'm ready if we're ready. I am ready. So. Hopefully chat is ready for this as well. Big thanks to everybody for coming out and tuning in uh, to all of these games as we get into our last game of the night, TT1 versus Gorinich. And here we are spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Circuit Breaker in the red as Protoss. This is the Canadian TT1. And in the top left, we've got the Zerg Hope. It is Gory Nietzsche. Look at that Overlord. What could it mean? He is doing it again. I mean, uh, I guess he always scouts to the... L no? Wait, does he always scout to the left? Of where We're he's spawning? Oh, to the left of where he's spawning? Uh, well, yeah, I guess I well, it's not uh, left clockwise. That would be the direction, yeah. I think he always scouts clockwise. Yeah, I'm not sure. Now, already we've got a little bit of a different build from TT1. First off, this is going to be a forge expand because there's no probe in position. But also, I guess he's decided that he might have to scout for Scorinage this time. And he's sending <laughs> it out pretty fast. Look yeah, you're right. We got nine pool. Yeah, he is going to go aggressive again. And um, I feel like if he knew this was one of those maps where uh, Protoss tend to go for like early in XI or late cannons, then you could absolutely uh, you know, see him go for like nine pool speed and just really run and be, be aggressive. But as is, yeah, he still might hit before there are a ton of cannons up. Let's see if he gets scouted. Uh, let's see how good a scout this probe gets. It should get in and see the, the nine pool though. Yeah, TT1, when he sees this, he knows it's gonna be a nine pool. He knows all the timings. And because of that, he's gonna definitely get down that cannon before Nexus. It's not gonna be like the first Circuit Breaker game where he went for the Nexus before cannon and almost lost the game. We even got a pylon block. So now you know 100% this is gonna be a, a cannon right here. Yeah, and we're just gonna see that come through. Da, 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 cannons down, all right. So we're we're checking all the boxes for surviving the early. Ooh, reblocks with another pylon. What a jerk! Yeah, but here come these lings. Gonna be able to clean up this. Oh, 
he's not going to clean up the... Oh, he's just course. going for it. Yeah, Gornich, of course, doesn't know what Protoss is doing. So if he if he killed the pylon, potentially Protoss could have gotten away with the Nexus before cannon. So Gornich is just going to go buy it right now. But TT1, too smart for that. Smartly is putting up even two cannons. Uh, and he, le he left one Zergling back at home to kill off the second pylon. It is going to get cancelled, so no worries there. Both hatcheries are going to come up in the meantime, and uh, Gorinich isn't um, the kind of player that's just going to blindly try to run through two cannons. That's it's not going to work out for you. So, pulls back. He's going to have all three hatches up, maybe a little bit delayed, but uh, he should be able to take this probe out and then get on with phase two of the build which you might imagine is going to be some variety of, of five hatch Hydra. It seems to be what he's been going for basically every one of his games. Yeah, he's been doing that pretty often. He did go for Speedling in a lot of the early uh, early Zealot pressure games that TT1 was mm -hmm. going for. Make sure that Zealots could not cripple his econ. Now this geyser, this is not a 230 extractor for Gorinich. This is a bit later and i think it's just because he opened nine pool and also he has a third hatch before the gas so this is a little different of an opener coming out from him meanwhile tt1 did lose that probe but smartly he's sending out another one immediately and it's going to get around these overlords so gornich is not going to know that a new one is out on the map yeah i'll see if that one can repenetrate and get back in there uh, although there is a ramp block with zerglings so that should make it uh, a little bit more difficult I guess anything's possible with probes, man. They just seem a little bit too slippery. He's going to scout for the base in the bottom left and not see it. So at least that'll be kind of a breath of fresh air as TT1 tries to build up what he needs. Let's see, what's he going for? I'm guessing we're just going to see like plus one speed lots again. Yeah, I, I, that's pretty much the trend. But I feel like Zergs are just so good versus that, that TT1 may mix it up. And he's someone that definitely has a variety of builds. Here comes that probe. Oh, it just barely gets by. But Gorinich already has Lings in position, so this is going to get killed. We could even see the Dark Archon build that TT1 likes. I've seen it most often on Circuit Breaker. I don't know if it's because the third base has no gas or what, what the actual reasoning behind it is, but he, I've seen it more often on that map. So it, it, there is the potential. For that the fact that he's going citadel and the overlord sees it this could be zealot man again but there is a good chance that this could be the dark archon build and also he's got the second gas so that leads me more to believe that there's some type of templar play coming in yeah i i i hope that we see that dark archon i remember watching uh who was it, it was best experiment with uh dark archons versus uh terran and I was like, wow, that's just, you know, really weird. But he also likes to use them uh, versus Zerg. Uh, he's just like, that's that's kind of becoming his unit. Uh, I was watching him play, uh, I think it was KCM. And he was pulling out Dark Archons, like, as many games as he could get away with it. I think Best All killed a KCM, like, maybe a month ago? He's, he's uh, really been kind of the go-to guy that I, I watch for, for what Protoss players are, are doing now. But of course, TT1 is never really conformed <laughs> to the norm. So see if it gets weird. He is having that big gateway explosion while he starts that, those DTs. So we'll find yeah, out if they get together. The DT coming out of the NAT. I don't see Maelstrom or anything being upgraded at the Temple Archive. So I'm not going to have the DA build come out for TT1. It's going to be uh, just standard Dark Templar timing. And Dark Archons, I've seen... There's this one game I saw of Rain on Afrika, and I nearly lost my mind because he didn't get a robotics. In oh, did he? I thought he was going to catch that DT with the Overlord and Lings. But it has well, as is, he's going to know about it now, so that's like half the battle. But yeah, that was actually almost a sick block. Yeah, but th this game I saw from Rain, he skipped the robotics. What he did was he went Gateway Man. Oh, it is Maelstrom. Archon, and oh, it is Maelstrom. But Hell you can yeah! Also Oh, okay, so this is just going to be... Uh-oh, this may be too late. Well, the, the mutas are, the mutas are here. just going to kill him, right? Like... Oh, DT. There's no Overlord here! Whoa. Okay, so the DT is actually going to get in and force a full pull. But let's see how much damage these mutas do. Oh, it's going to catch the Archon Morphing. Oh my god, this could be terrible. 
Yeah, I think the Archon's gonna live for now. Yeah, so he's gonna survive the initial mutants coming out from Gorinich. Now, TT1 sent out three probes to get into the main of Gordonich and none of them got in. So this was nice game sense from him. Oh man. Mutas. Oh, DT's six still probes. alive. Or, or six drones, maybe seven. He's gonna go in here for another one. Seven. And it's still alive. Wow. Muta's actually getting a, quite a bit of damage done. Uh, that was a decent amount of damage, but also he lost, I think three or four Mutas at this point. This is not the minimal commitment to Mutas of only five this was upwards of nine or so it's a big commitment from him meanwhile he even has more back at his main oh my god three more mutas so this was a huge commitment to mutas and i think that might backfire for him because his econ is really shot at this point we just now see the fourth and fifth hatch coming down for him not to mention this dark archon does have that maelstrom it's just finished completing and while we don't have storm he can absolutely maelstrom and kill every one of these mutas so you have to be super, super careful about that. I, I love that you, you called this build and we're actually getting a chance to see that. That's just so cool. Yeah, this he uses this build quite a bit. It's really strong. You just go for a normal-ish, like five to eight gate timing. That's what we're seeing here. We got six gates for him. And if you can just shut down those mutas, uh, like a lot of times the mutas at this point kind of useless but they're mostly used to pick off the Templars. If you just Maelstrom them, that's gonna be the whole strategy essentially for Zerg, their whole technique to survive yeah. the incoming push. So it's just a, a, a great counter for dealing with Mutas. Yeah, eight basically full health Mutas out here on the map. And uh, let's see, we do, uh, do we have Storm yet? Okay, it's almost done researching and there is uh, I guess only one High Templar. Oh yeah, he had to morph the other two High Templar into an Archon. So I thought there was going to be more. But it only takes one. All you got to do is land one Maelstrom, one Storm, and, and you're done. Yeah, it, 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 that's it. You just get one, get the Archon. doesn't even have to be Storm. If you just get an Archon in there and oh, splash yeah. everything, that can deal with the Mutas. But Maelstrom is a pretty short spell. Since I don't see it often, I'm not sure the exact time, maybe like eight seconds. So if you're in the middle of a fight and like your Zealots are blocking your Archon or something like that, there is a potential for the Mutas to get away, but I don't think that's really going to happen here. I, I don't see an engagement most likely happening. I think it's just going to be Mutas trying to find the Templar and then, of course, you're not going to get blocked if there's no like Mings or Hydras there to block you from getting on top of the Mutas. So we're, but here we go. TD1's moving out. His army is really big. He's got plus one. Gorgonich setting up for a counterattack. I think this is probably his best move. He's got tons of sunken set up at his third ha the third base. Uh, looks like it is 10 range with a seven and a half second uh, time. So lasts almost eight seconds on fastest. So we'll, we'll get a chance if we get a chance to see it. This is that sentence didn't make sense, but neither is this Nexus. It's going to get canceled instantly. Uh, oh no, the High Templar walked forward. Is he going to get the storm off? Is that High Templar just oh! dead? There it is! Six Storm, but there's no Maelstrom along with it, so the Mutas are going to stay alive. Yeah, I don't think that Gorinich has confirmed the Dark Archon either. I'm not sure if he's seen it just yet, but so far the moves have been pretty good because I, he cannot engage Protoss' army at this point. I mean, you can see it based oh, yeah. on how he's playing. He's got six hatch, but he's got like four Sunkens at each base, just now getting Evolution Chamber, so he doesn't even have plus one on his Hydras yet. Meanwhile, I think TT1 real has recognized that he can't attack either, and he's just going to take his third base, may even double expand. I'm waiting for that Maelstrom to come in. Gorin is setting up for another counterattack. There's nothing sadder than seeing a full energy Dark Archon that goes on to die. It's like, well, what was your purpose this game? Uh, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, Dark Archons are probably the coolest looking unit in the game. Like, they, they are actually fantastic, but... A lot of times they just kind of sit around. Although I do like that Gorinich has kind of unclumped his mutas there for a second when he ran in, just to make it harder for them to get all get maelstrom. Yeah, that was smart because, like I said, I don't think he's seen the DA. I think he saw that time he went in that there's a DA. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, still not, maybe not. But regardless, Gorinich. Wow, both players are just gonna play passive because Gorinich taking his fourth base. TG1, I think, is going to send this probe over, take a fourth base. Oh, he caught two more High Templar! 
in the middle of the map and your Dragoon, that's so rough. Uh, let's see, what's the High Templar count? Is he down to one? Okay, he's got two High Templar. Yeah, I think he's down to two High Templar. That is not many. Yeah, so this army from TT1 is really not that scary because it's not like he can push through the sunken line in Lurkers. You won't have enough storm to break through the lurkers also i was gonna say his observers are way late Egypt, but i see two flying in now he's gotta be careful cannot afford to lose those because if he loses those we're gonna be giving up this fourth base to the zerg no. and also he may even lose his third base there's really uh -oh. nothing here it's just cannons yeah his army is so far out of position on the opposite side of the map the cannons are going to explode instantly the mutas and the lings are just going to run over everything in their path and what are there there's two low energy high templar and oh my god he's going to lose two more high templar okay that's a nice storm on the mutas but it's not enough to save the base yeah meanwhile this attack to top left isn't going to work and he lost his dark archon that had full energy now he's trying to make it work he's got a lot of dragoons but we've got high ground advantage for this earth, we see a ton of sunkins here. I mean, storms are Gorinich's worst enemy. He has not dodged the storm all day today. Um, and so they keep getting insane value. And honestly, TT1 might be able to push through here. Uh, I mean, we'll see how much if this crackling swell is enough. This storm kills all of them. Yeah, the storms have been amazing, but we're just dwindling down. Lurkers are getting picked off. I'm. If, if TT1 could stream across the map, I, I think there's a good chance he could bust through. But we're not streaming across the map. We're just trying to take our third base. And he's basically mined out in his main, halfway mined out as natural. He needs to get his third base up pretty, pretty fast. But that storm on the lurkers hit like five. It's so insane how bad Gorinich is against storms. Like, I'm not criticizing him as a player. Obviously, he's super sick. He's one of the best players out there. But, like, specifically against storms, those are just his worst enemy all day long. And so TT1's just finding insanity value off of that. Uh, that being said, he still is only on two bases, struggling to hold his third here. So as much as we can maybe criticize that one aspect of Gorinich's play, he's killing it in every other aspect. Yeah, and he's like almost even in supply, which is not where you want to be as Protoss. We see Hive Tech is done. I don't know if Adrenaline has started or kicked in yet, but we definitely got double evolution chamber, triple evolution chamber even. Wow. Even having those critical upgrades coming in pretty soon. He's already got 1-1, one, one, and TT1 only has plus two weapon at this point. Oh, and the man. Forge, Forge not spinning, so we don't have plus three coming in either. These lanes got to cancel on the Nexus. Yeah, yeah, cancel's so huge. You are It's going to take so much for TT1 to get this Nexus up now. Even when it comes up, it's going to be so late. It's, uh, it's, only a, it's, a, it's a mineral only base, keep in mind. Like, there's no gas there. So eventually, you're going to run out in your main, and you're, you're going to have to look somewhere else. And, and that's going to be even more difficult, especially because Gorinich is double expanding off of this. He's just going to have infinity bases. So TT1 is going to do basically the only thing he can do at this point and try to get out there and deal damage that last. Yeah, he's got a, a ton of Dragoons, like an absurd amount of Dragoons, but we don't have any Storms here. Well, we only have a couple Templar. There's so many Lurkers. Oh, so no. Many well, there's okay, not so... actually that many Lurkers. <laughs> These Storms, it doesn't matter where you put the Storm, Gorinish will run 100 Supply into it. Um, so, uh, I mean, we uh, let's see, there's two more storms with this army, and that's about it. But this this high three goon count is actually working out really oh. well for TT1, helping out against the lurkers and the sunkens. Yeah, here comes a huge ling lurker attack on top of the dragoons. These are cracklings, so these dragoons are just gonna get absolutely obliterated. They're upgraded cracklings too. Well, still eight survive, but at this point, I don't think it matters because we've got six hatch reinforcement versus we do have eight gates, but we have no econ. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's as well as this goes for TT1, maybe he even kills this base. Uh, Gorinich is mining off of three others. So, I, I TT1's credit, he is doing a spectacular job with these pushes. He's got another storm behind this, so you know that's going to be good. We'll see where it lands. Oh, oh. Craigasm. It's so good every time it works, but there's too many cracklings. Not enough splash damage left. 
Yeah, TV1 just fizzling out here. He's trying desperately to get more Dragoons across the map. He did manage to take out one of the hatcheries, but it doesn't matter. Gorgonus just put down another hatch at mid left. He's got more links constantly coming out. Plus two is going to kick in for him any second now. I think this is it. Gornich is going to take game one. It would be different if TT1 had the third and fourth base up, but he doesn't. I mean, it's not no, oh, like overtly over yet because finally uh, TT1 is mining off of that third base. So that means that he has tons of resources for Zealots. He's just going to be powering on Zealots. And, you know, even though High Templar are gas intensive, like if you can squeeze them out, they do kind of build up the value, the energy over time. And in order to break through a Protoss player, you need to, you know, find a way through like their storms. So if uh, if Pro uh, TT1 just sits back and storms anything that comes his way, I mean, he can probably hold on for a while, but I don't think he's going to win the game. Yeah, my, my main issue with TT1's status right now is we don't have fourth base, but also we don't have any. The forge just started spinning for plus three, and look at Zerg's upgrade plus two weapon. Just kick in. Yeah, he just got two two on the links. So these links are just gonna be eating up everything he's got plus two or plus one on his hydras. The upgrades are incredible. He's on five base now. TG1 doesn't even know about bottom left. He suspects mid, <laughs> the mid left and top middle. He has no clue about bottom left. Doesn't, so if I'm not mistaken, uh, the adrenal glands upgrade gives a larger DPS increase to the Zergling than Stim gives to Marines, right? I, I think that's true. I, I don't even know. I just know that Zerg Zerglings are pretty off once they get that upgrade. Yeah, indeed. If you ever, yeah, it's, it's just it's just not even funny. I mean, as, as strong as they are, they're still very weak to storm, just like Gorinich. So if we have another storm ready, let's see. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's just barely got energy for it. So if he wants to try to push through an arrow choke point again, maybe TT1 can keep making him pay while he mines back up off of this third base. I don't know. TT1 trying to take bottom middle, but a Ling already denied it. And here come those mutas that are somehow left over from earlier. Well, this one. <laughs> but here come How? more Ling reinforcements. Yeah, I don't know where he, they were hiding, but that one was hiding somewhere. He's gonna Surprise! Force, he's gonna force all of TT1's units back, so. Yeah, how do you kill that muta? I guess he's got a couple of Archons that are late to the party. So eventually the lone surviving muta will die, but uh, he's, he's done his job. This is six base Zerg. Um, Gorinich actually just built a round of I think like 12 drones or something overall. I saw a swell of like eight and then four more. So that is quite a few. He's got insane economy. He's just, he can just hold down the Z key and win the game from this point. Yeah, it doesn't even matter at this point if TT1 had mass Archon or mass Storm. There's just too much production from Gorinich. More Lurkers and Lings being set up. He's still playing pretty safe. Uh, but here comes TT1. He's going to try and bust down here, but his army's almost pure Zealot at this point. There's just too many Lurkers and Lings, even losing. Oh, I thought he lost all his observers, but he has four left over. What is it? Just the macro coming in. It's just endless. I'm just I'm just sitting here and watching this. This is like a like one of those campaign missions. Nioken. We're just watching endless amounts of Zerg overwhelm the forces of ire. Uh, this is why you lose your homeworld, man. Like, you can't you can't just keep fighting these battles. Yeah, and I like how Gornith just sends this tiny army to bottom middle. It's gonna shut down the Nexus again. And even if TT1 wanted to bust through, he can't reinforce because he's gotta de defend bottom middle. But that's GG. Wow, uh, really Thanks well played the there by, uh, by Gornich. I would say that probably losing more units than any other player I've seen to uh, to Storm, but it doesn't matter when you have basically infinity units. So uh, really, really well played. We finally got a chance to see that big macro style that uh, Gorinich is so strong at. Uh, and uh, TT1, it's, it's always surprising to me how long he can hold out in the game, but in the end, it was just too much. Yeah, just too much Zerg at this point. TT1 had a good chance. Like, we had three hatch Zerg for a long time. The DT got out, got some kills. The Mutus did nothing. We had the BA build, but we just yeah. never had the engagement. Also did nothing. Yeah, like, the counterattack from the Ling and Mutus is really what 
won the game for Gornich because it kept TT1 turning around constantly, and that just let Gornich build up uh, to that unkillable Ling Lurker Sunken. Whew. Well, that was only game number one. I think we're moving on to game number two. This is on Silphid. Okay, yeah. Uh, and obviously, this is going to play out much differently. I think for three-player maps, for Zerg players mean that, like, well, there's only realistically one place you're going to go, and that's trying to take a base in the other main. So maybe that can play into TT1's style. Um, I, I want to see him go for more of these, like, just man lot builds where you get speed plus one and go because that seems to be the most effective way that TT1's been able to deal with uh, with Gorinich to try to pressure him before he's able to hit that five hatch macro uh, timing. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. So I'm ready to get into our next map, Silphid. Yeah, okay, this is going to be uh, potentially our last game of the night. It's TT1 versus Gorinich on Silphid. Okay, here we are. Uh, this is uh, game number two, and spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, Silphid, is our brown Zerg player from Russia, Skorinich. In the bottom right, he must win here, or else he's out. It is TT1. Yeah, so I, I agree with the earlier statement that maybe we need to see Zealot Man this time. He had good <laughs> success with it. He just kept the aggression up. It forced Gorinich into this awkward position where he's building a lot of Ling when he wants to build Hydras, his drone count is low. I, I really like that play from TT1, so I think he should go for that again. I, I, I totally agree. I, I want to see more gateway and less forge expand. I feel like the forge expand is maybe a little bit too passive and that Gorinich maybe exploits that a little bit. Um, We'll see what uh, kind of opener he's going to go for the uh, another nine pool. So he does like that. And I think I think he just thinks that eventually one of these days he's going to catch TT1 with his, with his, his cannons down or not down in time and uh, and be able to push across the map to, to take it out. But uh, I don't know. I, th I think uh, this is going to be a gateway uh, expo. So all right. All right. We're already going to see a little bit of a, a detour from the way TT1's been playing. Yeah, and where will Gornich go from here? Probably the same style, two hatcher. Well, we on Silphid, did he go nine pull? Um, I don't think he did. I think last time he went 11 hatch, 10 pull. So this is a little bit different, but he did go nine pull on Circuit Breaker. And on Circuit Breaker, didn't he end up going for... He tried to go for that three hatch Hydra, but it got scouted. So maybe he might try and go for that again. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I I guess with the Overlord scouting, we've been highlighting Gorinich's scouting uh, all all series long, and it's it's correct again. So he is gonna find that gateway start, see the Zealot when it pops out, and he'll have the six links to uh, defend, uh, I guess, against it, or put on so much pressure that the Zealot can't even get across the map. Yeah, so this Zealot is, again, going to have to sit at its base and just defend for now. TT1 putting up a little bit more of a Sim City. Now, here's a little bit of a difference from Gornich. He's been building six lings all day with this 9 pull, but this time we have eight coming out. Now, I'm not sure if TT1 got into the base uh -oh. of Gornich to see if it's speed. Oh, these lings are wow, getting he just, in! He just ran straight by. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, well, good luck to Slow Zealots. That is not going to be fun. He's also building uh, a 12th pair of lings as well. So, oof. Well, we've, that got is... some... we've got some shenanigans coming in from TT1 because he's got Cannon Rush going to the third base, but he has to be worried about losing his main. There's yeah, six... dude, you need that cannon back at home. <laughs> yeah, he needs... yeah, and there's so many lings that can just run all over. You saw that he was building a cannon at the natural, but lings came in from the main and would have swamped the the nat cannon meanwhile gornich is just streaming links Wait. across the map it's not even speed links they're just regular links did gornich just win this game oh my god that that 
Cannon rush. Oh, he built a pylon, and now he's going to build a cannon up there, but that's not where you need your cannon. You're going to die to Lings. Oh, my God. This is so bad. Here that's we go. Also. Oh, Lings running in. Oh, my God. He's going he's gonna to kill everything here. He's got so many Lings in. The Ling flood is nonstop, and, yeah. and especially with Lings coming in from both sides. I, I think he did it. Yeah, I love how he just comes in, just forces units out of position, and then he just comes back and kills that natural cannon. That natural cannon's never gonna get up, ever. This, this, no, you're never yeah. getting it. One, you need to put it in your main or something. All that's gone. Meanwhile, and now you can just kill things. yeah, you can just kill the gateway. He's just flooding lings across. I think this is absolutely the correct play. Kill everything here. He's gonna take down the gateway. He's gonna go for the forge. Yes, it's like I came for the gateway and you did nothing. I came for the Forge, and then he's going to come for TT1, man. And I think this is just going to be a 2-0 for Gorinich. Our North American hope, GG's. Pro, uh, probe or TT1 tapping out, and Gorinich, with a 2-0 victory, will be our second player to advance out of BSL Group B. Yeah, unfortunate for TT1 because it looked like a pretty good opener for him, but Gorinich, how did all those links get by? All of them, not two all six of them got by and then i wonder what triggered him to just constantly build links because he had them building before even getting into the main base of tt1 but it worked out amazingly draw all those zealots out of positions and swamp the cannon and then yeah what can you do and then also that pylon that tt1 put at the top yeah. that was actually a huge mistake for him because he was at 23 out of 41 that could have been a cannon in his main yeah. Or a second cannon at his natural, or another zealot, or whatever. But or even just a pylon to block against yeah, the lings running block. through. So yeah, it ended um, up hurting in big time. I so if you put yourself in TT one's mind, maybe you think you're gonna hold because you don't think that there's gonna be more lings on the way. So then you cannon rush to get an advantage across the map. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can think about that, but I think in the end, uh, really impressive to see Gorinich send his first six lings across and then no wait this is somewhere i can get damage done i need more lings uh know to make those extra i think three pairs of lings and uh, he just had so many flooded right through that is a wide choke point to try to wall off uh against that many lings so congratulations our russian zerg player will advance along with our peruvian terran player dandy so it's a super exciting uh day to see both of those very strong players advance and I can't wait to see them in uh, the next, uh, I guess,